Hello, it's Ricardo, and I'm in the HIP 14909 system. And I'm going to take a trip to the Thargoid base, and we're going to look at it end to end, right the way from the initial distress call you see as you come into the system, as you can see on the screen, but then down to react to the first look of the Thargoid base from the air as we get closer to it into the ASP, and then we'll move inside and activate the central Thargoid machine. So, moving on towards where the distress signal is. We see a nice metallic sort of magma planet, bits of magma peeking through the planet's crust. And before long, you'll see the distress call. And as you jump in straight away, there's just one ship. It's a Corvette. And it's had a right Thargoid paste in. And I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you to click that subscribe button and give me a like. If you like what you see for these videos, this will ensure that you can see more videos as well as soon as I make them and put them up to YouTube. Now back to that Corvette. So you can see it's had quite the kick in from the Thargoids, the quintessential green mist and plasma fire within space. I assume it's plasma. I think plasma is the only thing that can actually burn in space, uh, emanating from the damage point on that Corvette definitely been a Thargoid problem and they've been on the sharp end of a pointy stick, the Thargoid's pointy stick. Now no beacons or distress signals to scan in the area. You can't select the ship, you can't scan it, all you can do is have a good look around. It basically alludes to Thargoids. If you've been to the other Thargoid battle sites then you'll know yeah, it, it's, it's in the same ilk as that. So it just goes to show this is one of the biggest ships in, in the Elite Universe at the moment before the old Type 10 Defender comes in um, The Return or Patch 2.4. Now we don't know what that Type 10 Defender is going to look like, but hopefully it'll be the same sort of size, if not bigger, than a Type 9 hauler or transport ship, which will put it bigger than this Corvette. And it just goes to show, no matter how big your ship is, no matter how thick your hull is, it's not going to do much against a sustained Thargoid attack. Now, this is going to be the Thargoids, we know. We've seen the coded message in the other battlefields and battlegrounds that we've examined within the game, especially after the community goal of E3. But, Nobody knows how it's happened. Did they attack unprovoked? Did this Corvette open up on the Thargoid? You don't know. And that's one of the big questions. And we're going to need some great big honking space guns, I tell you, uh, if we're going to stave off any sort of attack from the Thargoid. I mean, commanders at the Barnacle sites have opened up with everything they've had on their ships, rail guns, lasers, pulse weapons, engineered weapons, and it's not made a dent in the scripted Thargoid encounter. Now I know it's scripted. So what sort of great big honking space gun are those engineers, those clever dickies? What are they going to give us to protect against that Thargoid threat? And I guess we're going to have to wait and see. So for the first encounter of Thargoids or a Thargoid presence in this system, Quite nice, quite subtle. Um, could done with a bit more mist or a bit more intrigue or some data to scan, I suppose. So let's talk about the base and let's talk about the initial location of the base. So we're in HIP 14909. The planet we want is planet 2A. Now, as you can see on the screen, we're going to move over to 2A. There it is. Thank you very much big blue planet with the ring second planet in well first planet in really that's what you want okay there's three it's the first one head on over there now on approach to that planet you shouldn't have any encounters within system it's gonna be pretty much straightforward 
and it's not too far away from the jump point either. As planets go, it's quite atypical of the planets we've seen with Thargoid bases on them. It's quite barren, huge meteor impact. And I've got to say, on planet 2A, and the coordinates are minus 26 and minus 27, as soon as you get close, you cannot fail to miss that base. It is huge. Like, I'm, I'm a good couple of hundred kilometers away, and you can see it there in the distance. You know, you, you're not going to miss it. If you do, better go to spec savers. Um, but it is quite easy to find once you're in the general vicinity. And as you approach even closer, you can see the spiraling shape that we've come to associate with Thargoids. Moving closer again, you can see with a Thargoid imposed on the screen and the base. That could be a landing pad in the middle, it could be a, an aperture to take Thargoid ships. Very difficult to tell. So we're getting closer and closer now, we can see spikes or tentacles, jagged protrusions coming up through the planet's surface, suggesting that this base or ship, we're going to call it a base, right, has been buried and buried for a long time. The spikes, I think, quite reminiscent of H.R. Geiger and the Alien films, and more recently the Prometheus films as well. Definitely the art team have lent towards that sort of Geiger-esque look. They're a sort of bio-organic or biomechanical entity. Ships that have perhaps have been grown. They're like the Cylons in Battlestar Galactica. And again, you've got to see the similarity between that and also the Alien movies. So some of these outlying structures or tendrils off the main base are big enough you can fly your ship in. Okay, I'm in the Asp. You're probably not going to get an anaconda in there. Um, but the Asp is quite big in comparison to some of the mid-sized ships. And, you know, you can get in there. There's no problems. Taking a nice leisurely flight now over the area. We can see it's very sort of like a spine. It reminds me somewhat of... Um, the, the dead whale carcasses and skeletons you see at some of the old oiling stations, perhaps up in Norway. Now, as you can see on some parts of the superstructure, there are these little scavengers, that's what they're called, welding or repairing parts of the structure. Now, it looks like they're actually sucking things off there, sucking things off the surface. Though I could be mistaken, please put something in the comments uh, if you think I've got that wrong. Whether they're sucking the deposits off the surface and they put them into small piles. Now these scavengers are all over the place, they're all over the base. And you can shoot them. But if you do shoot them, then they're going to get all angry in their blood and they're going to turn red and they're going to come straight at you. However, if you do shoot them, it does mean you're going to get some materials. Some rare materials and some rare items. Again, another group of scavengers working away on that part of the superstructure. Going about their own business, their own pre-programmed tasks. Now this point here, this point reminds me of, I think, the, the main navigation point in Alien, where the engineer is actually strapped in, and you saw it in the original 1970s Alien. So continuing our tour around the base now. We can see some great sort of like dome shaped structures. Quite domish I suppose really. And it's all very pitted as well. Uh, but the effect of the substance is I think a little bit like Mother of Pearl. There's that sort of metallic -y, rainbow oily effect to it. But you can see just how big this base is. It's just one small section of it. And as you as it's round in a one big circle, as you travel around the circumference of that, you get some idea of the repetition and the size.
again more scavengers in the upper levels continuing to work on whatever it is they're working on. So there in the distance you can see the central core, the central structure of the base. And having a look now at the material used, you can see that sort of metallic -y, rainbow oily effect I think on the um, on the outside of the structure so let's head on now and turn our attention to some of the other structures on the base in particular that central structure now there's a few entrances and exits around also you're going to see some of those organic trees from the barnacle sites and some geysers or geysers that are spouting plumes, uh, only small plumes, of course, of uh, some sort of jetted material, some sort of vapor. If you drive over those in your SRV, you can get a bit of air. And those organic trees are being tended by those small scavenger type machines as well. So this means I'm also going to find metal alloys here. I'm also going to find some other rare materials, iron, germanium, manganese, that sort of thing. And here we can see one of those small, perhaps barnacles in the making, a baby barnacle as it was. Just by the entrance to the base. So let's get this ASP on the deck and get into the SRV and see what we can find out. Of course, here's the entrance to the base or one of the entrances to the base. Now, visibility on the planet surface is really very good. I've seen some videos from some other commanders around there where it's all dark and misty and that certainly adds to the ambience. I think I've hit it the right time. Uh, I can see what's going on. You know. I, it, the lights haven't got to be on all the time and you're not shrouded in too much mystery. Uh, perhaps not as atmospheric though as what some of the experiences some of the other commanders have had, but nonetheless, like I say, you can see what's going on. So we've got the ASP on the deck. Time to get into the SRV and have a drive around. See what materials we can pick up from those organic trees and from those scavenger droids. No, I'm calling them droids, because I'm assuming they're some sort of biomechanical. So there's an organic structure. We've seen these before at the Bionicle sites. Shooting them is going to produce some bounty of some sort, whether it be meta alloys or whether it be some sort of material to pick up. So it's going to be a material. A little bit of carbon. Now, if you haven't got an unknown probe or if you haven't got an unknown artifact, then that door is not going to open and shooting that door is not going to get you in either. So what you have to do, you have to have at least one or the other in your hold. Now, it's always worthwhile just taking one in at a time because that way then you can pick up some of the other materials that are inside. Now as you approach the door and approach the structure, the lights and power on your SRV are going to flicker. They're not going to die completely, you're not going to lose control as we have done in other Thargoid encounters, but it will flicker off, but as soon as you back away, your lights are going to come back on. So that's a really nice touch. Not as bad as what it was, like I say, the other barnacle sites where you completely lost power and people were getting all frosty in their SRVs. No, no, it's going to be fine because you're going to be able to drive that SRV around the inside of the structure. So here I am mowing down more organic structures as well to see what materials and bounty they're going to give me. And here's one of those baby barnacle or geezer sites. And there you go, you see the, the jet plume will put you in the air slightly so you'll get a little bit of air. So there's a skimmer. So we're going to angry him up. And you see he's turned red. But he does drop 
an item. Now his friend's coming at us as well, so we're going to have to see him off. And then scan our bounty. Unknown car pace. Great, okay, we'll pick that up. That's going to be a material. And one can only hope that all these materials you pick up from the scavengers, and that looks like human engineering to me as well, are going to be used in building the weapons with whatever engineer produces them to combat the Thargoid threat. So I've got an unknown power cell there, unknown energy cell. There's a new material. So all these go into materials, so you can pick up to a thousand of these, uh, providing that you've got enough space. I'm coming dangerously close to enough space in my material store. And um, of course, you can only carry two tons at a time, or two items at a time in your SRV cargo hold. So yes, look at that, that's gonna be meta alloys, that can go back to the ship. That's one ton in the SRV cargo hold taken up already. Yeah, a bit of mangalese there, might as well pick that up. Now the scavengers are gonna drop some items, but this one caught my eye as being of human origin. And it has indeed got writing on it you know it's it says a mod terminal by the look of it so is that some sort of cross-pollinization of, of technology i don't know but one can only assume that these items can be used like i say to make additional weapons that's enough uh wombling around the outside i think i think it's time to turn our attention now uh to the inside of the base so I've been back to the ship and I've got myself one of my unknown artifacts or probes and I'm going to head on inside. Now the doors will only open now if I've got one of those items. As I approach, it'll open fan-like and I can move inside. So inside, again, very alien-like. Lots of anti-chambers with mist, unknown resin, unknown biomatter off some of these small areas. And this is the Palin second mission. Palin will ask you to either bring back two tons of biomatter or two tons of resin. And you can find these off these anti-chambers. Now they are corrosive, so bearing in mind you have to have either a probe or an unknown artifact in your hole to get in and out of the item, uh, of the base, then you can only carry one ton of these back at a time. So it's going to take you a few journeys. So, still an awful lot of disruption to our technology and power systems. Let's move on to another antechamber and see what else we can find. Now, you are going to need an unknown data link, and these spawn from a chamber very similar to the one that we've just been in. Look out for those pods on the ground. If you do burst them, you will incur damage to your SRV. Some areas have got caved in. But continuing round, you you can you get the, the idea and the feel of where you are. Anything to the left, or see as I move in this way, um, is going to be towards the central core. Anything to the right is going to be another antechamber. Now the lights, even on main beam, aren't illuminating a hell of a lot inside here, but there are still more scavengers wafting around. And here's the main chamber. Now there's going to be data link ports on the side which you can scan for additional data so make sure you have some data space. And you can see the three areas where you need to insert some Thargoid technology. Now around this central core as well are going to be green pads. You move your SRV on top of them and then they will show you holographically what item you want. That there is some unknown technology. But looking at the sky, there looks like to be eggs or egg sacs stuck to the ceiling. And again, this is just a blatant rip of alien. If you turn this entire place upside down, 
It could be the original Lecky Chamber from the original Alien film. But hey, it's good stuff anyway. I think Frontier are doing an even better job than perhaps some of the other software houses that have made an Alien game. So everything's dead at the moment, just a light on the center console waiting for you to put those items in. And you're gonna need an unknown probe, an unknown artifact, and an unknown data link. And I say the data links you can find around this base. So there you go. This is alluding to what I can put on some of the platforms. I've scanned the central structure and I've got some encoded data. Though I'll probably read that later when there's not so much interference with the systems. So the central structure obviously being the, the key piece. The other anti-chambers, as you can see here, hold those data links we were talking about. Now these data links, you are going to need to put one in and it is corrosive, so be very careful. You are going to incur damage to your SRV. Your SRV doesn't have anti-corrosive cargo holds and that could be a very good upgrade, I think, off one of the engineers. So there you go. As you approach one of these chambers on the sides, tendrils will float down, presenting you with an unknown link, giving it a zap with the old SRV cannon will make it drop to the floor. You can then select it and then pick it up with your cargo scoop. So as you can see, moving towards one now, one comes down on these sort of tendrils of light. And a quick zap brings them down. So moving back into the central core now, I'm going to drop off some items and then come back in for my data link, circle back around as it were, and see if we can get this central core activated. Now the light show that you're going to get with the central cores being much lauded about on the internet. I think you really do have to come out here and, and take a look at it yourself. So here we go. Here we are in the central core. So I've put one or two items in already. I've put the data link in already and I've put the probe in. Just time now to put the artifact in and then activate the base. But as you can see, the items are now suspended by those tendrils above each of the pods to insert these into the pods you drive over one of the corresponding green pads as you can see i've done now that will then show you holographically what you have to jettison from your hold you just jettison it from that pod and then it'll appear in the section that you want it to so two in only one more to go. You can see my SRV is bathed in a sort of spooky green light. So I had to head back out now and go and get the other item from the ship so I could bring it in. And it is a bit of a pain when you're having a two ton capacity on the SRV. So even this is a bit of a grind. So now we've got it, we're going to head back in. That's the wrong pad. Let's go on to the next pad around the other side. Now these base scavengers, they're not paying you any attention at all whatsoever, which is strange. I suppose if you shoot them, they're going to. Now, that's the pad I want. Onto the pad. Select jettison. Let's get rid of that unknown probe. And the, and the tendrils will sort of bring it up into position. Now, once you're at a nice safe viewing distance, you can then select the central core, give it a scan, and that will activate it. 
So I'll be quiet now and let's all enjoy the ambience of the cinematic. So no sooner does it start, it does end. One important tip for you though, however, is you can actually get back in there and re-scoop up some of those items and trigger it all again, if you're careful. I did it twice, then I got stuck, and then, well, I had to escape the game and then go back in, I spawned back outside. With all that being said, now I've picked up the two items that Palin wanted for me, in particular some unknown biological matter, and I'm heading off back to his base, and I'm going to get a good old 940 odd thousand credits for it. I've been Ricardo, and this has been Elite Dangerous. This has been the Thargoid base at HIP 14909, Planet 2-A, at the coordinates minus 26 and minus 27. Hope you've enjoyed this video, I've enjoyed making it, it's been a good thing to see all the Thargoid stuff all in one area. And if you do like what you see, please like and subscribe. See you soon, and look out for more videos in the series.